Hey everybody! Today, Rotto runs down a prototype of Roll and Write the Dice Game, which is a roll and write dice game where two to five players are game designers trying to design the best roll and write game that they can. And the way it works is, before we get going, we have a little bit of setup to do. Every player gets some inspiration for the game that they are trying to design. And in this game, I will be designing a game about Hot dogs! Okay. Although it could have been strawberries, or city building, or the globe, or ladybugs, any number of them. So, this gives me a particular goal of trying to get red and yellow bits adjacent to each other, because I can score a lot of points for that. Alrighty. Also, as part of setup, each player draws three tool cards, and three hallmark cards. And we're going to pick one of each. So, these are hallmarks I would like for my game about hot dogs. I'd like it to either have high tension or have a game arc. You can see a lot of these uh, designs really kind of thematically represent what they're supposed to be in games, including this high concept, a balloon. So I've got to do one of these. And let's see. Well, depending on what tools I have, it uh, might help me decide. Let's see. There could be a hen showing up in my game or a hammer or a tool shed. Now, if I complete these particular patterns, then I will unlock a special ability. And, um, like this one, that will let me do yellow or orange bits, which would help with the high concept. So let's say I um, am trying to have a high concept of hens eating hot dogs. That is the game I am going for. But there's a little bit more as well. This is the R&D deck. It might come into play later. And finally, there's going to be some awards because we're going to be competing in a design contest. And in this contest, we're going to be rated based on whoever has the most, the most completed Hallmark cards, whoever's the most Hallmarks, and uh, the uh, best all-around game, the most sets of all six colors, and the most developed, the most points from R&D. All right, so that is the situation. We are ready to go. Everybody else would have their own inspiration and hallmark and tool, but we're all competing for these. And let's roll, baby. Now, when uh, you are the active player, you'll take all the dice, roll them, and then sort them by color. All righty. So you got two oranges, two yellows, a purple, and a red. Now these dice represent bits of the game that I'm trying to put into my game box. And since I just rolled the dice, I get to pick one of these groupings and keep them for myself. Nobody else can have them. Let's see. Now, I'm obviously trying to match these particular patterns. You can see I need a lot of yellow for both of them. So I think I'm going to keep this double yellow for myself. Alrighty. Now that means I'm going to take the yellow pin and put two yellow bits in my box. Now I can put them anywhere. They don't have to be adjacent to each other. And you can see, well, I want to have my yellows line up in those particular patterns. So, and I would like to get my hand finished first because then that lets me generate extra yellows or oranges. So it'll help with the high concept. So let's just go on ahead and have these two yellows. I'll just have them right next to each other. Bippity boppity. All right, because uh, you can see that's how I want them to go. Now, I could be trying to go for this hand shape like this, or like this, or like this. You can rotate whatever you want, although you cannot mirror. So, I've taken those two. Now, while I was doing that, all the other players who are playing, they get to choose from their remaining colors. So, Bob might have decided, oh, I just want a single red because of whatever they're trying to make. And uh, Joe and Jill both decided, hey, let's do that double orange. And um, there are there's just one set of pins, so if multiple players want those, you'll just take turns with the orange pin until everybody has uh, done their a bit building in their box. Now, after that is done, players have the option, if they want to, to erase any one bit that they've put in their box to use a special power. And I don't think I want to right now because I got the bits that I actually wanted. I've got them where I want them. I could erase one of my yellows to use the yellow special power of change that bit's color. So uh, I could uh, erase this yellow and turn it into an orange. And then I'd be trying to go this way. I'd have a yellow and an orange next to each other. But I'm just going to leave them alone. Other players, you know, somebody might have taken the red to put into their box, not because they need red for their pattern, but because they wanted to unlock the red special power. 
power, for example. All right. Anyway, and that's it. Um, on your turn, you roll the dice, you pick one color that only you can use, and then everybody else gets to choose from the remainder, and then the dice go to the next player around the table. So let's say it's someone else's turn. They roll, and what have they got here? All right, some greens and some yellows. Now let's say the dice go a little bit crazy, and they end up with four greens. Whoever is the lead player cannot take more than three dice for themselves. So in this case, you would uh, have a group of three greens, a group of one green, uh, orange and purple. Although that's not what really came up. I totally forgot what did come up. Let's just say it's this. Oh, wow. It's uh, everything. Okay, that's crazy. One of every single color. Anyway, the lead player most desperately wants a color because they're trying to make a pattern or because they want a special ability. Maybe they took the purple die for themselves, so nobody else gets that. Why did they take that? Because they could erase that purple that they added to their box, specifically because that would let them get an R&D card. Which, remember, in this particular game, there are points to be had for getting the most points off of R&D. Every R&D works the same way. When you collect one, you either take it for points or you get to add two extra bits to your box, one or the other, and then it's uh, used. So uh, that's why somebody else took the purple. They kept it not for these, but instead for the points. Although actually they could take it and just use the red and the purple and then erase that purple later. So they ended up you know, netting a red out of the whole thing. But anyway, that left all these for me. And what do I want? Well, I'm still trying to finish this. So I'll just go for the single red. And other players might you know, uh, take the red or take what have you. Now, once again, if I wanted, I could erase. I could erase my yellows to change their color, or I could erase my red. And what happens with that is, I get to copy and connect another bit. If I erase this red, I could take either of my yellows, duplicate it, and put it elsewhere so that I could like create a string of yellows, if that were what I was trying to do, because I had some particular pattern. So anyway, that was the second round. And then it comes back to me. Let's say we're playing a two-player game. And I get to roll, and I get first dibs, Two blues, two greens, a yellow, and a red. So I'd like to do doubles because that gets more bits in my box, but neither of my patterns want those. But maybe I'll take one of them anyway. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I will. I think I will take these two greens. And then, you know, everybody else, they did two blues or one yellow or one red. Now, what am I doing with these two greens? You know what? I almost don't care because I don't need greens here. I'm just going to put a green down here and a green over here, just out of the way. And um, while everybody else, once everybody else has chosen what colors they're adding, what bits they've added, I am going to erase one of these greens, which allows me to go back to the uh, Hallmark deck, draw three more, and keep one more. So not only do I want my game to have a cool high concept, like um, chicken eating hot dogs, but I could also try to ensure we have uh, novel mechanics, interesting decisions, or harmonious gameplay. Let's see, which of these match best? Well, remember, my hand, once I get this tool built, it allows me to do yellows and oranges. This needs a lot of oranges. I think I want my game to also have a great high concept and allow for interesting player decisions. So I raced one of my greens uh, to do that. And uh, then it's somebody else, it's the other player's turn. They're gonna roll. They see, uh, right, oh, you know, and they, they figure, okay, I'm going to take two blues. And then that's left for me. Hey, if I wanted, well, I've got another red. I could take that red and keep on working on this hen. Or do I take that to work on my pattern? Or do I take two greens? Which would allow me to maybe erase another green. And um, no, I think I really want that red. But there's another thing. If I take the two greens and say I go like this, Right. All right. So let's say I did that anyway, even though I need the red to keep on working on my hand to unlock this power. Now I've got an interesting situation. Once again, I could erase one of these greens to get yet another hallmark, like say fast turns or uh, an affordable game or deep discovery. So I could go for any of those, but I'm not going to do that because there's something else I'm considering as well. Everybody has this development chart on their board that reminds you that if you can make a complete line on the top or the bottom of your box, or a complete line on the right or the left of your box, and a complete line through the diagonal centers of your box, you unlock a bonus bit of any color that you could put anywhere you want. If the dice don't give you what you want, you can always get what you want by completing these. So I am now, if I don't erase one of these greens, I am half of the way towards completing this, which will give me another color I need to complete something that's really important. And so, there we go. 
And uh, then the game rolls. There's a couple of reds. And all right, so what you know, what is somebody going to take? Probably the reds, unless they're really desperate. Because remember, in this game, purples are a big deal. Whoever has the, the most points from purples, so somebody might snag that instead of the more lucrative double red. And so on. The game is going to keep on going like this until somebody has filled all but three bits in their box. That's going to trigger the end of the game. And by the end of the game, uh, if you've completed all the spaces of your box, there's six bonus points to be had. But you also score points for the different cards you've completed uh, and the awards and all of that. And most points, obviously, is the winner of Roll and Write the Dice Game. Oh my gosh, this game is so sharp. It's fun, it's fast, uh, it is full of really interesting decisions. Uh, you know, and while at first glance it might seem really obvious, oh of course, take the doubles or take the triples. But often that is not the best move based on the objectives, based on the tri the patterns you're gonna go for. And uh, right up to the end, it is a cool, fun, uh, it's a silly little abstract game, make no mistake, but the theme really does come true, uh, come through as you get more and more of these hallmarks you're trying to do and you you really do uh, you know get that sense of invention coming through, you know, not because you're really inventing a game, but you're inventing clever uses of the dice to hit the patterns you need to be able to score the most points possible. This is a lovely, charming game. Um, you know, the last couple of years, we have had a spate of really excellent roll and rights, and this one is no exception. It can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with pretty much all of the big hitters that have come out uh, in recent memory, and Jen and I have enjoyed it quite a bit. That is, folks, the rundown on Roll and Write the Dice Game. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.